Hello, this is Chicho again. Now I wanted to do a little introduction video for the next batch of videos that are going to be coming up in the next few days. What I ended up doing uh, when I decided to do um, you know, a series on the equal signing units, I opened up a gigantic can of worms because this section is huge, right? Because there's all types of equations you're going to get and equations are just a small part of the puzzle. Equations you can think of functions, but functions in a special case where the y value is equal to zero, okay? So you're trying to find x-intercepts. Whenever they say solve an equation, what you're doing is you're trying to find the x-intercepts for a function, okay? Now, we'll get into that when we start talking about functions, and I do talk about it a little bit in, in these videos that I've already shot that I'm, you know, working on. So what I ended up doing, because this is a lot of material that I, I needed to cover, what I ended up doing, instead of going around town finding walls, because that would be, uh, you know, I just wanted to keep it consistent, I ended up going to UBC and commandeering a lecture hall, a classroom, and ended up doing um, all the videos, and I'm still doing some work there, uh, doing the videos in the classroom. So we're going to be using a real chalkboard in a lecture hall. It's still going to look small in a little screen, but uh, uh, that's where I'm going to be doing the videos. That's where the videos are coming from. So what I ended up doing was uh, starting off with basic equations and taking it up to higher level um, higher level equations so what we what what's going to be coming up is the first batch of videos is going to be you know the first type of equations we're going to get which are simple equations where you can isolate the x and you get a value for x okay where it's just x on one side you could the equation could be gigantic but you can combine all the x's on, so that you can o you only have one x on one side and that equals a number. So we're going to have some examples of that type, those types of equations. And then we started doing, or the videos that are going to be coming up, they're going to talk about quadratic equations. These, quadr these are quadratic equations. And the way these work is, it's x to the power of 2. So for a quadratic equation, you need x to the power of 2. You could have the single x value to the power of 1 or not. doesn't make a difference. With these types of equations, as we've talked about before in series two, you can't combine the x squared and the x term because they're not, not identical. They don't have the same power. So there's new techniques that we learn to be able to solve these equations. And these types of equations, if it's x to the power of two, the degree decides the maximum number of solutions. You end up possibly having two different types of solutions. You could have one, you could have two, or you could have none, right? So there's going to be a whole bunch of videos or you know, a bunch of videos coming up talking about quadratic equations and how we solve quadratic equations, okay? And what I decided to do is go one level higher and deal with equations with higher degrees than two. So we're going to have equations coming up of, you know, x to the power of five plus b, x to the power of zero. Anything, you know, any type of equation where it's higher degree than x to the power of 1, because x just means x to the power of 1, x to the power of 2. So I dealt with, you know, higher degree equations, and we're going to do some examples there, and, you know, learn one technique, which is called synthetic division, and how to solve these types of equations, okay? Now, between all these, I, I, again, I'm going through this stuff super fast in the videos, because uh, this is a huge subject, and, you know, in between these, you should be doing a lot of examples if you have you know if you're in a course dealing with these types of equations you should be doing examples of these to get this down packed because it's again it's their new techniques of how to you know work with the language of mathematics how to move things around how to get answers solutions to um, to problems to equations Equations you can think about as the precursor to functions because equations are really just functions where we're forcing the y value, which is this side of the equation, the y value to be equal to zero. So what we're really doing is finding x-intercepts. And I go a little bit into this when I'm doing the videos, and we will get into this stuff a lot more when we start getting into functions. Because this is just, you know, solving equations. It's just one smart, small piece of the puzzle when it comes to, you know, the language of mathematics, but when it comes to us being able to 
model something in the real world or not the real world, in the imaginary world or anything that we want to model, right? So this solving equation when this is equal to zero is just us forcing the function to be equal to something and finding the x values associated with the function. This is really related to the Cartesian coordinate system that we talked about, x and y, in series one. So, what we're going to do and start is start, you know, putting functions in here and finding out where the solutions are. And the solutions are really where the function crosses the x-axis or any other axis that we set up. Right? We can force an axis to be. As I stated before, zero and infinity are, uh, you know, a huge concept. They they basically, uh, you know, define our limitations in mathematics, our restrictions, what we can do in math and what we can't do in mathematics, where mathematics can take us and the information it can, uh, you know, give us, and its limitations of how much we can get, what you know, what type of information we can get from it. Right now. As we talked about before, one of the restrictions we have in mathematics is that we can't divide by zero because what happens is our equations, our functions explode. So if you have one over zero, you know, I've stated that this is approximately equal to infinity. And infinity isn't a number. It's us, you know, it's a symbol telling us that this thing is exploding. You know, something goes haywire here and we don't know what the final answer for this is if we divide 1 over 0. We can do approximations and that's where we, you know, we're going to get into. But exact values are, are not there. We don't know what happens when you divide by 0. Things explode, things go haywire, the language collapses, right? So we're going to use this property or this restriction when we're solving equations and later on when we get into functions. What this does is creates asymptotes for us. So when we have a function and somewhere on the Cartesian coordinate system you end up dividing by zero, what it does is creates an asymptote. So if we had a function, let's say you were coming off an asymptote here, our function cannot touch or cross this line. It could appear on this side but you can't go over it. So this is sort of a boundary that you know you cannot go over or into. So a function may look like this, right? And it, you know, gets closer and closer to this line, but it never touches this line. And solving equations, when we're solving equations, what we're going to do is use a property of zero to solve equations that have higher degrees than just one. And that property is, for example, if you have, you know, a times b times c times d is equal to zero. If you have four things or multiple things, multiply it together to give you zero. The only way this can occur is if at least one of these things is zero. And when we're solving equations, we don't know which one of these things is zero. So what we do is we solve for each one of them equaling zero. So what we do, we set each one of these things equal to zero. Because we don't know which one is which zero, right? D is equal to zero. And this is the property of zero that we're going to use to solve equations. So when we have x cubed times x minus 2, you know, x is zero, we've got three things here, three terms multiplied together to give you zero. So the way we solve for this is we set set each one of these things equal to zero. So we go x cubed is equal to zero, x minus two is equal to zero, x plus one is equal to zero. Okay. And we solve for these things. So x is equal to zero is okay. the solution. X equal to one is okay. And this is a very powerful property of zero that comes up that we use in the language of mathematics to solve for equations, which is basically means to give us information about a function.
If you get lost through any of the videos that we're doing, don't worry about it. I will go into detail in the stuff when I start doing functions. But one thing you can do, if you need me to cover anything more in, in the next batch of videos coming up, post comments, uh, preferably on YouTube because that's the most active. So post comments on YouTube and you know if anything needs further clarification, what I will end up doing is after this, after zero and infinity section, if there's time still left over, um, you know, in this shooting season, I'm, I'm breaking these down into shooting seasons based on the weather. So if there's still time left in this shoot, shooting season, uh, I will go back and make additional videos to clear some stuff up.